we like to keep the things that we own as clean as we can. That's why Dan is cleaning his bike. It looks much better now. But his hands don't. Now they need cleaning. Dan washes up because for one thing, dirty hands don't look very good. Clean hands look much better. But these are different hands, a doctor's hands. And they're being washed for a more important reason than appearance. The soap and water are washing away microbes. Microbes are the tiny living things that are all around us. Harmful microbes are usually called germs. Because germs cause infections and make us ill, much attention is paid to cleanliness in a hospital. This girl is one of the patients here. She's much better today. The infection that made her ill began when disease germs entered her body and then multiplied inside it. There are many germs in your mouth and nose even when you're not sick. That's an important reason for covering your mouth when you cough or sneeze. In the hospital laboratory, let's see what some germs look like under a microscope. Another name for germs and other microbes is microorganisms. That is, tiny living bodies that can be seen only through a microscope. Now, as an experiment, let's take a sample of the germs that made this girl ill. We'll rub the cotton swab with the germs on this culture plate. It contains food for the germs. The plate is divided into two parts. We'll treat half of the plate with liquid soap. Like some of the soaps we use every day, it has germ-fighting chemicals called germicides in it. The other half of the plate is left untreated. When the culture plate is placed into a special kind of oven, an incubator, the germs have not only food, but warmth and moisture the conditions they need for growth. These are similar to conditions inside your body. Let's see what has happened after a few days. Well, on the half that was treated with the soap, nothing's happened. The soap, with its germicides, kept the germs from growing. But on the untreated half, there are white spots. Each spot is a colony of thousands of germs. So the use of soap can prevent germs from multiplying and spreading. We've already seen how hands are kept clean in a hospital. Cleanliness of clothing is important too. Clean uniforms are always worn. Everyone who works with patients wears clean clothing. Clean uniforms for the people who work in a hospital as well as clean linens for the patients means a lot of laundry. So the laundry room of the hospital is quite an important place. Into the huge washing machines goes all the laundry. The soap and water will get it clean, but the high temperature of the water and the germicides in the soap will also destroy most of the germs. While washing machines get clothes and linens clean, sterilizers get medical instruments clean. Inside this sterilizer, very hot steam kills germs that even boiling water can't destroy. Instruments used in surgery must have no germs on them. So in a hospital, to prevent the spread of germs, everyone is concerned with cleanliness. Cleanliness of the people, of the clothes they wear, and the instruments they use. Most of us aren't as careful as people in a hospital. Have you ever put something like a pencil into your mouth? That's one way germs may get into your body. Taking a bite of someone else's food is another way you may get germs into your body. That's why it's a good idea to refuse offers like this. You can also get germs from another person by drinking from a glass that someone else has used and not washed. 
food that has been handled with unclean hands, yours or someone else's, may have germs on it. When you eat such foods, germs can get into your body. Many germs thrive on the warmth, food, and moisture found in your body. So if your skin is cut or broken, germs may enter your body and cause an infection. To help prevent an infection, you can apply an antiseptic, which, like the germ-fighting elements in some soaps, kills many of the germs. But even if your skin is not cut or broken, it's still a good health habit to care for your skin and keep it clean. Let's see why. This drawing shows us a cross-section of the skin. Here is one of the hairs which grow out of the skin. The oil gland produces oil which makes its way along the hair to the surface of the skin. And here's a sweat gland. It produces sweat, or perspiration, which is carried along the sweat duct to the surface of your skin. Your glands give off sweat all the time, but you notice it most when you're warm. Sweating helps cool your body when it gets overheated. Sweat is water which contains waste materials from your body. When the water evaporates, the waste materials are left behind, along with oil, dirt, and germs. This mixture is everywhere on your skin, right down to your fingertips. Let's transfer a bit of this oily mixture to a glass slide. Now let's try to get the slide clean. Water alone hasn't done it. Water alone won't get your skin very clean either. What about soap and water? The soapy water gets around and under the oil and loosens the mixture. In a similar way, soap helps to get rid of the oil that is mixed with the dirt and germs on your skin. So when you wash, you need to wash everywhere and with soap. Your scalp also perspires. It gives off waste products as well as bits of skin, dandruff. Since there is so much hair on your scalp, much oil collects there. So you have to wash your hair and scalp thoroughly and often. If a soap is used that contains a germicide, leaving it on for a minute or two will kill more germs. Using a germicidal soap helps eliminate germs and unpleasant odors. You especially want to wash thoroughly where you perspire heavily. Giving your face a good washing is important. You want to wash away the oily mixture, which may cause pimples. And now, a good rinsing will wash away the dirt, oil, wastes, and germs. When you dry, it's especially important to dry between your toes. The spaces between your toes are warm, and when they're moist, microscopic fungi can grow there. Such fungi cause itching and redness and breaks in the skin, which we call athlete's foot. Because germs live in the dirt under nails, having clean fingernails is another good health habit. Clean nails look nice, too. Brushing your teeth is a kind of washing, too. Brushing removes food particles, which might otherwise be fed upon by the germs in your mouth. Such germs form acids, which can attack your teeth and cause tooth decay. Dan's all dressed now. His body is clean, his clothes are clean, but more than that, Cleanliness will mean better health for Dan.